Hello, beautiful boss babes. Are you ready to chase life with Kelly? Well, I'm your host, Kelly Chase, and I'm so excited you're here. We are going to talk about all things love, dating, relationships, money mindset. We're going to dive deep into self-love, worthiness. I am going to bring on some incredibly empowering guests. We're going to have fun, we're going to laugh, and perhaps we're even going to shed some tears together. I am here to empower you, inspire you, and motivate you to create the life you crave. I am so excited for today's episode. Let's dive in. Hi, babes. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the show. Um, I am going to introduce you to one of my dear friends. Um, She is a business and embodiment coach, uh, speaker, published author. She is the host of the Boldly Courageous podcast and community and is a confidence expert. And let me tell you, she really is because she just helped me out. (laughs) I needed a little confidence this morning, Um, but she's so amazing. Please welcome Miss Melissa Martin to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I love you. I love our conversation. Me too. I do too. I just, you know, you always, it's so interesting in this space of when you're getting, I drank some coffee this morning. I feel like my mind is like ridiculous. Um, (laughs) I know I ever drink coffee. Oh, bear with my thoughts today. But no, it's just like ever since I started this journey um, back in 2018, um, I have just, you know, I had to let go of a lot um, and, and create distance between me and some other relationships that weren't necessarily uh, supporting the journey that I was on. And ever since then of doing things alone and doing things scared and uncomfortable and everything, I've met some just wildly incredible people. And due to the fact that I have just been practicing, you know, a lot of self-care and self-love. I mean, I call it my self-love journey, but it was also like my spiritual awakening and connecting within and all of that. And I feel like the more that you do connect within, you are aligning yourself to who you want to become and your highest self. And in that you are attracting the type of people that are also on that similar path with you, if not even, you know, going to pull you up with them. And I would say Melissa is one of those people. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you are. It's just so fascinating. Like, I mean, our, our small world of connections and mutual friends, but you know, we're all in this entrepreneurial space and it's just so neat to, I don't know, just like support one another and lift each other up and and to have that. And I'm grateful that I was nudged on the shoulder by God four years ago to be like, you need to go on this journey. (laughs) Amen to that. Yes. Yeah. Self-love is a spiritual practice, I believe. And it's really the the practice of just becoming your most authentic self. And, you know, when we're born as little babies, we are the most authentic versions of ourselves until we're told that being ourself is not normal or we or we're going to be excommunicated from the community or the little pods that we create. And we we start to form all these stories and that's how we function in society. Yeah. And then there's, um, you know, to use Marianne Williamson's words, like a return to love, right? Mm-hmm. A return to love and love, I believe is such a spiritual practice every single day. Yeah. And it is a devotion to meeting yourself in not only the light, but in the darkness, like really being able to hold yourself in the dark in the fear, in the mud and in the feelings, because those are the places that need the most love. And I know, you know, we always want to numb them out. We want to run away. We want to hide them because sometimes it can feel like a lot to hold. It can feel like a lot to, to carry. Mm -hmm. And I, what I've learned in, in my journey as well is that the, the running away and the numbing out actually just prolongs the agony. It's like being in purgatory, right? Because Uh now you're numb. Now you, you have an absence of feeling, but the feeling is always there. And the moment you stop, whatever your coping strategy is, it all comes, it's like compounded and then it's even more to hold. So if we just face it in the moment and just give ourselves the ability to sit with whatever it is we're experiencing, extreme pleasure and extreme pain, Mm -hmm. and we can shine light on those parts of us that need the most love, like we become more loving. 
And that's such a spiritual process. So I'm honoring you in that it's been, it's in the short time I've gotten to know you, it's been so much fun to watch you walk that path Mm -hmm. and shine your light and now share that with your community as well. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. (laughs) Receiving. receiving. (laughs) I love. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. So tell us about what, what is an embodiment coach? Can you go into that? What does that mean? Yes. So I believe that we all have three versions of ourselves and I'm wildly obsessed with human potential Mm -hmm. and just really being able to live a life that like blows my mind. And with that comes being able to hold not only the pleasure, but hold the pain as well. And so embodiment for me is really about not just thinking about the future version of who I am, but actually acting as if she's already here. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's three versions of ourselves. There's the past version of us, right. That has all the stories have been there, done that all of our mistakes and our failures and some of our success and really likes consistency, really likes routine and loves the comfort zone and often is our mean girl. Um, but is like, the past version of ourselves is always the one that's like going to show us proof of why we suck or why we can't do something or why we can do something based on consistency. And then the future version of ourselves is, you know, I view her as like my highest expression of authenticity, right? She's the version that shows up so confident. She's so self-assured, you know, money flows to her. She has an amazing, really, like she just literally has the life of her dreams, like beyond, like the potential is so mind blowing. You can't even fathom how good it can be. Mm-hmm. And so every single day, the third version of ourselves, which is our current self has to make decisions. Information is coming at us and the current version of ourselves has to filter this information. And we have choices that we have to make and action we have to take. And we're either doing it from our past self or we're doing it from our current self. So the embodiment work that I personally am devoted to every single day and that I walk my clients through in the work that we do together through various containers is really about future tripping right? Of like, who is that, who is the version of you that is the most authentic, that is the most true, that is the most in integrity? And how can you walk and talk and, and be that person now? I was literally just having this conversation about money with, with, um, you actually, well, and a client, I had a a client (laughs) The future version of me, you know, she makes $300,000 a month. And I'm like, that number to me is so mind blowing right now. And if that money were to come to me right now, there's, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Right. So that for me was like, okay, Uh, where a lot of us get this backwards is we think once the money comes, then I will be successful. I'll be rich. I'll be this, I'll be that. I'll know how to hold it. I'll know how to manage it. And so we're always reacting to our environment. And we're always, you know, waiting until the thing happens to be that person. Mm -hmm. Embodiment is saying, I'm going to create the foundation and be the woman now that can hold $300,000 a month. So what are the thoughts and the beliefs and the rituals and the, the knowledge that I have to gain and who must I embody today so that when that money shows up, I can hold it because it's going to come. Yeah. And if I embody it now, it will come a lot faster. And so there's a, we constantly, again, like I said, love is a spiritual practice. We're meeting ourselves in that embodiment. I'm like, is this an old paradigm? Or am I embodying the future version of myself and my fullest potential? So yeah. it's a very long answer to a, <laughs> to your question. But to me, that's what embodiment is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how would you, okay. So with that embodying 300,000, mm-hmm. yeah, that number sounds, you know, crazy, absurd, quote unquote, you know, to some people, I mean, even myself. Yeah. That's like, well, you know, we, we may want it. I don't even know what that looks like a year's salary. I don't know. Like multi-millions. I don't know. <laughs> Like three million, I think two, three million. Yeah. I, don't yeah. know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's like, okay, so could you take us through how you would coach someone through that process of embodying what three hundred thousand dollars a month feels like, looks like, embodying that? 
So what are they, what are those limiting beliefs and fears that this prospect, you know, this client is thinking and that's keeping her right now from receiving 300,000. Yeah, absolutely. So the first step really is to get um, tapped into the vision, like actually feel it. So I think where um, in my experience with clients I've worked with and myself, where um, the refinement process opportunity is available when it comes to manifestation or embodiment is that we can think those things. But if we don't feel it in our body, we're not congruent with the vision, right? Mm -hmm. So this is why law of attraction is somewhat flawed, right? We think, oh, I'll just think positive thoughts and amazing things will happen, but our body doesn't believe that it's true. And so part of this process is through meditation Mm -hmm. and through creating memories in the future. So we have to actually go there. We have to actually go there. And I remember doing this for myself and I had this, um, I was playing with the idea of what it would feel like to, to make a hundred thousand dollars in a month or more, like more, more, more. And I was sitting in meditation and I started having this visualization of these people coming into my apartment with boxes full of cash, like physical cash. And they were just one after the other filing in and they were starting to pile all these boxes up. And at first it was like, wow, this is really cool. But what started to happen was the room started to fill up all the way to the ceiling. My office was full. The bathroom was full. Then it started pouring over into the living room and I started to feel anxiety. Like there was no space and there was nowhere for it to go. And I couldn't hold it and I couldn't see, and there was no room. And I was like, slow down. It's too much stop. And I was like, oh, wow, this is here. I didn't know this was here. And so being in that embodiment, being in that visualization of what what does it feel like in my body allowed me to see where I was blocking being able to receive. And so now we go into that and we start to look at, okay, what's been my experience with money in the past? Like what was my earliest memory of money? What are the stories that we're creating? Right? So when it comes to embodiment work, when it comes to shifting into the future version of ourselves, right? there's a framework that we go through in this process and it's an acronym that I've created for the word power. And I'm going to go through it like super fast, but this is like the work that I teach in my mastermind programs and some of the retreats that I do. We go a lot deeper into like the actual physical component of breath work and meditation and all that. But the first component P is to bring presence to our current environment and really recognize like, okay, I know that um, I want to make, $300,000 a month, I'm making $5,000 a month. So how do I like, what's the gap? Like, how do I get to 10? How do I get to 15? Like what? And we have to get really present to our current environment. And like, what have we manifested in our life? Cause we're always manifesting, like whether you like to recognize this or not, like you're always becoming a match for whatever is in your life. So if you don't like what's in your life, you have to be present to that. And the second component O is to observe we have to observe the stories that we're telling ourselves about what we can and cannot have, Mm -hmm. what we are or are not capable of, um, what we desire, what we're blocking. And a lot of this stems from our childhood. So I like to go through a timeline exercise. So it could be relationships or it could be money. And we go back to our earliest memories of love and relationship or worthiness or money. And we start to look at those experiences, the big experiences that have happened in our life. And we start to extract, extrapolate the story. Like I had a story. I had an experience when I was um, in first grade, I had transferred schools, elementary schools. And the, uh, the version of me that fit in, in the school that I was at prior was an inner city school was the girl that was quiet and fit in that same girl in this small upstate New York school was very loud and like, didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. And so I had this deep longing to belong. And I, the, there were these two girls, they were best friends. And I wanted to be their friends like so badly. And I asked them, I was like, Hey, I would really love to be your friend. And they said, well, we're really fast runners. And in order to be friends with us, you have to be able to run really fast too. So you have to do this obstacle course. And they like planned out this obstacle course oh on the playground. And they're like, you have to run this obstacle course like in a certain amount of time in order to be friends with us. 
And I was like, oh, I can totally do this. I'm a fast runner. Like I've got this. I am so determined because I just wanted to be loved. I want to be accepted. And I wanted to be in the, I, you know, I was abandoning myself. I yeah. didn't know that, right. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you know how the story goes, right? I ran it as fast as I could. And I was so proud. And they were like, sorry, it wasn't fast enough. You can't be friends. And I mm. belief at that, at that moment in time around the sisterhood wound and like, I have to, it, it's, I'm not enough. Like, and so from that point on, I started to realize that I was different. Like my clothes were different. My home was different. And in order to fit in, I had to look a certain way. I had to make a certain amount of money. And that has carried with me through my whole life until now I see, I observe that the relationships, the female relationships that I had in my life were not making me feel great. Mm. Why? Because I was constantly feeling like I had to prove myself. And so I was in these really toxic codependent relationships that when I started to shine my light triggered the women that I was friends with, because that wasn't the agreement that we had. The agreement was I play small so Mm. that you'll accept me. But the moment I'm better than you, like we can't be friends anymore because I'm challenging the status quo. Right. So we have to observe the stories and really, really honor them. The next component is W and we welcome in a new story. So that's the future version of us. Like, what does she do? How does she feel? What kind of relationships does he have? What is the new story that we want to create? And also how can we have gratitude for the past story? Mm -hmm. So in every story in our life, There is a villain and there is a hero or a victim. And oftentimes we're walking around playing the victim. Mm -hmm. And when we play the victim, the villain gets all the power and the villain gets the, the limelight. And we're actually blaming somebody else for our inability to stand in our power. But when we welcome in a new story and we decide I'm going to be the hero we actually have gratitude for the villain because without that villain, we never would have been given the opportunity to step into something greater. Mm -hmm. So we can welcome in a new story, but we also have to recognize that those things that we've been through were a gift. It was a doorway and an opportunity for us to choose a different path. And a lot of times we just keep going through the same doorways and expecting a different outcome. And we go around in these loops and we repeat these stories over and over. I mean, I do it in dating. It's like exhausting. <laughs> I know you can relate. It's like, we've been here before. You have a different face, but like, it's the same story. So the universe is like, okay, let's go around the, the merry go around again until we have to recognize like, oh, right. I'm in a loop. Yeah. So we welcome in a new story. And then E is embody. We have to embody that story. So it's not enough just to think it, we have to feel it. And so the embodiment work is the hardest component of this shift process because it's where we meet ourselves in our truth. This is where I am a woman of my word, no matter what, to myself. Mm. So when the alarm goes off at 8.30 and we don't feel like meditating and instead we scroll our phone and we look at Instagram, we are dishonoring ourselves and we are operating from an old paradigm. When we um, say yes to something, it's really a no because we want someone to like us. We are dishonoring ourselves, and we are operating from our old paradigm. So we're not embodying the future version of ourselves. And so this embodiment process of like welcoming in a new story Mm -hmm. is the work where we meet ourselves in our integrity, in our authenticity. And I truly believe that real love, real self-confidence comes from honoring our word to ourself. Totally. And then the last component is R, which is release and rejoice. So release is forgiveness. And there's a certain level of forgiveness that has to come when we are embodying embodying a new version of ourselves to forgive the past version of ourselves for the mistakes that she's made, for the ways that she's dishonored herself, that she's manipulated, all in an effort to get what she thought she wanted. She just didn't know that that wasn't the way to go about doing it. So there has to be this release that happens and a rejoice on the other side of celebration. Celebration is the foundation of everything I do in my life, big or small. Like yesterday, I I'm anchoring in this belief that I'm a powerful manifester, right? So I ordered some green juices cause I had hadn't gone to the grocery store yet. And I had three instead of two, I had only paid for two. I was like, look at this. I'm a powerful manifester. And then <laughs> 
I went to the grocery store and I was checking out at Whole Foods, a self-checkout, and I, I go to grab my receipt and there's 70 cents in the change thing. I'm like, I just manifested 70 cents. I'm a powerful manifester. Like, look at this. This is amazing, right? So I'm playing with that. And it's like, when you can celebrate those small little examples of how you are embodying a woman that can hold wealth or a woman that can attract her desires and actually hold it, it starts to like amplify. So like if you can't celebrate the 70 cents and be excited about it, you can't expect 70,000 to come. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. So that is the process that I take my clients through and and it's about personal power. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I'm like, I need to come up with an acronym. <laughs> I, I am like a, like, listen, I am for as like a woo woo as I am, like, give me a good strategy. I'm like, I love frameworks. I love strategies. It's, it, they just make me feel safe and yeah. make it nice for my creativity to like flow within, you know? So. Mm. Yeah. Now I'm like spinning my wheels. I'm like, <laughs> what does magic stand for? I, that's exactly what my question uh, is. Magic. Like, I'm going to have to, yeah. Yep. I'm going to have to put that together. I do too. It's, it's interesting. Um, after doing, thank you. Well, one, thank you for sharing that because that was so good. Um, two, going back to that before I start my next thought, uh, what you were saying about like, um, just like the manifestation and the receiving and everything. I know that both of us are, we're listening to Melanie's master class and it was interesting. I think I was catching up for her like day three, one yesterday and something she said was, you know, we always think that we have to have the money to pay for things like, yes. right. Yes. But why, why do we have to feel like we have to have money to pay for things? Why can't we just open ourselves up to receive the desire in whatever way it is meant for us to come meant, meant to come in for us. And that could be, like you said, like just finding 70 cents, like, right. Like you didn't have to, necessarily pay something to get the 70 cents. You didn't have to pay the whatever. It's like, I don't have to do anything. I just had to be there. I just had to be yeah. myself. Yes, exactly. And so it's just like embodying, like you said, that, that just like power of yourself, the magic within and everything. And it can come in whatever form. And it's interesting because I have witnessed that wildly this past year. I have wanted, so I've been probably investing in mentorship since 2018, you know, pretty consistently. Um, there was a time that I did take a back step on monetarily investing in mentors because I got myself in a financial rut. And I was like, I I literally can't afford this right now. (laughs) The reality is I can't. Um, But I was still investing my time and energy and listening to free webinars and masterclasses and things like that to continue educating myself and keeping more or less. It wasn't like just learning. It was keeping myself at a higher vibration and calibrating in these other women's, um, you know, energy and that kind of thing. Right. So it's just been interesting, but like this, um, this past year, I know I've been very transparent and vulnerable about this, but you know, I felt like my ego, my spiritual self and my ego were at war with each other ever since like the show aired. And I've just had like a lot of challenges around my own business and my identity and all of that. And so it's that confused that confused energy has created a lot of confusion and inconsistency in my life. Um, But with that being said, after the last mentor that I did have, we finished in like January and this woman sends me a message on Instagram and was like, Hey, I don't know why I just felt called to reach out and offer you this experience with me. And it was like 12 weeks of life coaching and So that, but for hours for her certification. So it was like completely completely free, right? And then I, like another coach, like we were wrapping up and another coach reached out and was like, Hey, like, if you can just post about it, I will gift you this six month program. Hmm. I'm like, Oh my God, you know, like we, thank you. You know, but I feel like it was just, well, it was just reassurance listening to Melanie yesterday and the thing of like, why do we feel like we always have to pay for things? Like, it's just you being in that energy and that alignment and you opening yourself up to receive your desires. Like, it's just been so fascinating. And then obviously there's been other little synchronicities and everything, but I'm like, that's so true though. Like, you never know. Like someone could reach out and be like, if you were wanting to, I don't know, buy a new house or something, like 
maybe you have your heart set on a particular type of house, but it comes in a different way or their price is dropped $200,000 on this house. Like you just never know. So it's like, we can't beat ourselves up about things that are so in the unknown. Yes. You know? Yes. And you know, I mean, we are, our, our world runs on a currency of money, right? I mean, it's very, it would be very difficult to survive in this world without money, but I feel like we're not, oftentimes it's not the money that we desire. It's the experiences that money can provide. Exactly. And I will tell you that I have learned so much about appreciation and gratitude for experiences by being resourceful versus having resources. Mm. And, and so like learning, like not having access to money to do the things I've wanted to do has given me an opportunity to learn how to recreate experiences within the resources that I do have or to be resourceful. And so to your point, like we're always manifesting things, right? Mm -hmm. Like look at, like it's, it's when you decide that you deserve to receive and you're open to it showing up in any one way, you become so much more expansive, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'll use an example with dating. Right. So like recently, what has felt really good for me is I've deleted all my dating apps and I've decided like, I'm not, I'm (laughs) not, I'm just in a place where if God wants to send me my person, he'll show up in a, in a way that does not require me to be on apps because I was finding that um, it was causing me stress and anxiety. And I'm in a place of refinement right now, energetically speaking, where I am really paying attention to the things that are causing me stress and anxiety and I'm removing them. And that was one of them. And so, um, and I also had this idea that, um, I would, would be unopen to a man showing up in my DMS on Instagram. And, and here's why. I believe that containers matter and social media for me and for you as well is primarily work. Like this is a work container and to mix relationships into that felt messy to me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, he can only show up on a dating app because that's what dating apps are for. And that's the energy that I'm putting into it. And if he's not showing up on a dating app, that's the, he's just not showing up. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I also believed that like, when you get into a relationship, you delete the app, but I'm not going to delete Instagram. So I was like, to me, there was some muddiness there. Yeah. But I realized that like, I'm asking God to send me this person, but I'm only available for it to show up this one way. And it's like, I'm blocking my blessing. So would I, would I rather just have my person show up or would I rather know exactly how he's going to show up? Right. And so I, so this is surrender. And for anyone that's listening, that's an A-type person like I am, the word surrender used to make me break out in hives because I'm like, but how, but how, what do you mean? Just give up? Like, I, like right. I have to do, I have to do. And I have a new relationship with surrender that I'd, I'd love to share. Yeah, um, I would love to hear it. And, and it, and it falls in line with this idea of manifestation. So like, I am, as I'm sure you can tell an analytical person, like I am a Capricorn. I like details. I like facts and I'm also deeply spiritual and woo. -woo. And so like there's, it's, it it sometimes feels challenging for me to bring these esoteric sort of like non-tangible things into a systematized tangible world. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that I would hear people talking about manifestation and you just, just like surrender. I'm like, none of that makes sense to me because what am I supposed to be doing? Like I have to do something and like embodiment work is taking action from the place of it already being done, but it's not done. So how, like I was confused. Right. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> but what I've come to learn is that, and, and using the, the dating app example is, and, and, and money and like being open to, to things coming is less about the, how it shows up, mm-hmm. but more about the desire and the knowingness that it will come. And so when I sit in, I think about my future self, or I sit and think about my King, I can feel his energy. I know what it feels like because I've sat in that experience and I've created that memory in my body physically. 
So I know what it feels like. I know who he is. I just don't know how he's going to show up. And so when it comes to manifestation, the first part, our part, is to continue to hold the vision and be the person that when that thing shows up, we're ready to receive it. The universe's part is to orchestrate how. It's not our job to say, I'm only available for it to show up on apps. But Mm -hmm. he could be at Whole Foods. But no, I'm not available for Whole Foods. It has to be on my app. Right. So your light is not on. You're not really open. And so I had this thought the other day. I was like, it's like a magic show. Surrender and manifestation is like going to a magic show. And you see this magician, the universe, and he's like, do you want me to show you a trick? And you're like, yes, I would like to receive magic. I would like to receive delight. I'm here. I paid money. I want to see a show. So you pay the money to see the show. The magician is the universe. And the universe says, I'm going to show you a trick. I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to do this trick, but I'm going to make this rabbit disappear. And you're like, how are you going to make this rabbit disappear? I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to let you know that the rabbit is going to disappear. And so the universe does its thing and the rabbit disappears and you're delighted. You're like, oh my God, the rabbit disappeared. I got what I paid for. I got a magic show, right? but I don't know how it happened. Yeah. That is surrender. Because if you knew, if you went into the magic show and you knew all the, the tricks, you'd be bored. You'd be like, this is right. why, why did I pay my money for this? I already know what's going to happen. I already know this spiel. I already know it. I, and there's no, there's no room for magic, mm. right? There's no room for possibility. And so generating wealth, attracting clients, calling in your dream partner, it's not about like the steps that you take. Yes, you need to be continually doing your work to be a woman that can hold the wealth, to be a woman that can hold the clients, to be a woman that can hold the partner. So you, you practice love as a spiritual practice. You shine light on the shadow. You get educated. You, pre- you are preparing yourself for the thing, but you're not forcing it in a, that it has to be this one specific way. Yeah. So like, could you wake up tomorrow being a multimillionaire? Yes, you could. Yes. Mm-hmm. How could that happen? A great aunt could pass away and leave you a fortune and you wouldn't even know it. You could play the lotto and win millions of dollars. There are multiple scenarios of how you could become a multimillionaire tomorrow. Yeah. But if the only scenario that was available in your head is I can only become a multimillionaire by the things I sell and I don't have a big enough audience and I don't have anything to sell. So there's no way I could be a multimillionaire then you're blocking the blessing. So this is surrender. Mm -hmm. And I finally understood like, oh, my brain can actually wrap my head around, like hold the vision, be the woman that can hold it, do the, do my part. And then just trust that it's going to show up in the most magical, unexpected ways. And I'm going to be delighted by this incredible magic show that Mm -hmm. someone just made a rabbit disappear or pulled a rabbit out of their hat. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I love that. I feel like, like, and just tying the surrender in, um, it's a deep, it's a deeper level of expansion. Yes. Of trust. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when, I don't know how I know. I just know because I can feel it because I know it because God put it on my heart because I have the vision. Right. I just don't know what it's going to look like. And if I did know it wouldn't be as fun. Right. It's even more fun not to know. Yeah. It's the game of life. Life. It's like, I love, um, I'm relatively new to Atlanta and I love when I get in a car and I am going somewhere that I know how to get to, but the GPS sends me in a different direction. Mm. And I, I find new neighborhoods that I didn't, I mean, Atlanta is so beautiful and there's so yeah. many like pockets and I love architecture and the trees. And I'm like, I am so delighted by yeah. this beauty. And thank God that this GPS sent me in a direction that was unfamiliar to me. Mm-hmm. because now I have all of this to celebrate and I still got the same outcome. Right. But it was way more fun this way. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Atlanta is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I love it here so much. Good. I'm so glad. Yeah. I, it's interesting. It, like I went on my walk this morning and um, it was just, just again, kind of like tapping into you and connecting within and everything. It's like, you know, the whole saying, like, you know, stop and smell the roses. It's something that I very much so practice 
when I'm on those walks. Um, yeah, maybe I have my phone with me. I mean, my phone is always with me just for safety reasons, <laughs> but, um, I do try to like put my, keep my phone in my pocket or something like that as much as possible. But also there's a, a part of me that's like, this is, you know, taking pictures of things to remind myself of that connection that I'm having. Like I was walking under, I'll, I usually stop and like take pictures of the flowers or something that I'm passing by, but I am not looking up as often or maybe I'm like, I'm looking out maybe slightly up, but like up. Right. And like, I would love to, I want to start doing this more, but go and just like get a blanket and lay on the grass and look at this, look at the sky. Like I, I haven't done that in a long time, you know, and I'm fascinated with the clouds or just how blue I took a picture yesterday in my parents' backyard and it was like crisp blue and crisp green grass. And I was like, have you ever seen anything more blue or green? Like, that's so beautiful. And it's like, you know, I'm just, I'm so like elemental. I'm so connected in that way that I'm like, I see literally the beauty and the gratitude and like everything, but yeah, but like on my walk today, I looked up and there was tree and I just, I started to walk, like continue walking, but then I stopped myself and I was like, Kelly B. And I just stood there and I just like, watch the leaves just like, you know, do their little like rustle, I guess, in the light breeze and everything. And I was like, it's just so cool. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so weird about that kind of thing. But like, I loved it. Like, I just like loved watching the leaves just give a little shake. And it was just so cool. But then I noticed from like that, the other fascinating thing was like this one tree branch was like coming out and there was like maybe eight leaves on it. I took pictures of this. You'll see it on Instagram, but, um, all the leaves actually had holes in them. Like if someone took like a hole punch and like went through all the leaves. And so the, you could see the blue sky through the leaves. And I was like, that is so cool. <laughs> but I'm like, that just made me, it's uh, as you were saying, like your, your pee is being present it's being radically present in the moment. And I was just like, so connected in that moment that I was like, like, I don't know. It's just, it really is truly like connecting so much to the present and just being in that gratitude, being in like, you can have the both of the be be grateful, but then also have the desire on the other side. Like it's such a cool thing to like be in that though. And like witness it in the moment. Yes. And And that is, That is, um, if we're speaking energetically, law of manifestation, law of attraction, frequency, like going back to what you were saying before about like the women in your life and and, like calling in women that are on the same path as you, it's a vibration, right? So when you are in that place, you are in a frequency of love and gratitude, which is, which is the place that you, that abundance comes from, that money flows in money loves that kind of frequency, right? So Mm -hmm. It you didn't matter how much money you had in your bank account, doesn't matter your relationship status, you could be homeless and still have that experience. And that is the place that you want to create from. That is the place that you are the most magnetic. Mm -hmm. And you start drawing those things to you. I mean, there have been moments in my life where I'm like, I've gotten eviction notices and I'm hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And like anybody, like I should be in a place of deep panic and stress. And I have been in those places, but I've also been in overflow and abundance and gratitude. Like I was thinking of this the other day from a money mindset perspective. And like, this goes back to what we were talking about before about manifesting a coach and like these programs and all that is like, anytime I feel lack or scarcity around resources or money. I remember I am a well-resourced woman Mm -hmm. and I go to the grocery store and I look at the produce section. I'm like, there's no way that I could eat all of this food. And I go into my closet and I'm like, there's no way I could wear all of this at once. I look at my podcast app and I'm like, I couldn't consume all of these podcasts in one day. I couldn't read all these books in one year. I mean, maybe I could, but the point being is that going back to kind of like what we were talking about manifestation of like, it has to happen this one way when it comes to money and resources and abundance, like, and we're, we're in these moments where we feel like it's not happening. It's not coming. Like the money's not here. I'm late on my bills. I'm going to get kicked out of my apartment. Like 
my boyfriend just left me. Like it, it can feel very much like the world is caving in, but there we are so resourced in other ways. Right. And uh, one of my mentors, Christine Hassler always says a miracle is just a change in perception. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can go from feeling like the, the worst human in the planet to being like, look at how resourced I am. Like I'm sitting here looking at this blue sky, this green grass and this beautiful tree, which is a perfect example of like divinity and magic. Right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you can shift your vibration and that's the place that you create from. That's the mm-hmm. place that you take aligned action from and, and everything in your life and business can build momentum on that. Like everything else is circumstantial Mm -hmm. and can change. Yeah. That's so true. It's so true. Yeah. I, I I swear like my walks are like doing yoga. I literally did yoga in someone's like side yard today. (laughs) They don't know. Unless they have a beautiful side yard. So I I did really good energy. Thank you. I I know. I was like, I'm so grateful for this grass right now. But I just had to, like, I'm craving, I crave grass. Like I don't, I live in a condo. So, and it doesn't have like really like grassy areas. I mean, I know there are people here with dogs, but like there's not many grassy areas here. It's like more like pine straw. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, so there's a gorgeous, beautiful, like Buckhead neighborhood across the street from me and just beautifully like landscaped yards. And it's just yeah. so like the plush, like three inch yeah. thick grass, like, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I, that's why I'm like, I'm so fascinated with it. But um, yeah, it was just like, I need to touch the grass. So I kept like getting off this, hopping off the sidewalk and like putting my feet like right in the grass for a minute. And then like doing some like yoga, like little like stretches and whatnot. But then I like found this other little place today and it was like on the side of the house. Like they, there, there was like bushes in between us, you know, so they wouldn't get all to see me, but I would just like sat there. I sat there and I just like, let the sun just like hit my face. And again, I was just like, so present. I was in the moment and I was like, okay, Kelly, move your body a little bit. And I just did like a whole like sun salutation, like on this person's grass. <laughs> I was like, that felt so good. Like it feels so good. And then, yeah, then obviously I had to like come in and like get ready and everything, but it's in those moments, as you were saying, when you are so tapped in and tuned on, like that you can't like I get all of like my I start receiving all my messages and and whatnot you know and it's like okay how can I what not how but like what do I want to create today what do I want to do with this you know my goddess magic do I want to bring to the world magic yeah (laughs) so great um yeah okay so rewinding back to um the dating stuff we'll touch on it for a few minutes but Okay. So now you, did you open, like put the apps back on your phone then so that you, okay, no. So, so take us through that. Like, although you took away that thought of like pigeonholing yourself, why did you not now, what is your intention of not having the apps now on your phone? Like you've still, you're still blocking that way of receiving that. So where are you at and why are you not opening yourself up to that again? Yeah. It's a great question. Thank you for asking. I feel like I'm in a space in my life right now of refinement in a lot of ways. And I've really been calling myself to a higher standard of excellence. Excellence was my word for 2022. And so there have been numerous opportunities for me to meet myself in my own standard of excellence. And something that came forward for me earlier this year, I was having, uh, I do an accountability call every single week with our mutual friend, Lauren. And I was really just in this place of deep frustration because there was, there was a lot of inconsistency in many areas of my life. And I was really struggling with it. Like I was feeling ungrounded and I was venting to her. Like, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm so tired of these like men that are showing up so inconsistently. And it just, I, I don't understand why. And like, I, I was just kind of like, you know, verbally processing with her. And she was like, well, where have you been inconsistent in your life? And I was like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, these things, but it's like, oh. so it gave me an opportunity to really sit back and, um, observe my stories be present and recognize that I had, um, I, I came from 
the financial service industry is corporate background and in, in sales. And then I moved from that into network marketing and I did network marketing for seven years. And from a very young age, I learned that if I wanted something I needed to achieve and work hard. And so this hustle mentality has been deeply ingrained in my personality and it came out quite aggressively when I was building in network marketing to the point where I was dealing with adrenal fatigue and I was really out of congruency with my self-care. And so my relationship to the masculine has not felt solid and safe and rooted and grounded in consistency. It's felt like force and push and punishment that also came from doing fitness competitions. It's very structured. It's very rigid. Everything's there's no freedom in that. Yeah. And so when I transitioned out of network marketing and I started doing entrepreneurship full time, I was also transitioning out of a marriage. So there was a lot of change in my life. This is the end of 2019. I, you know, left my marriage, my network marketing company dissolved and I lost all my income in 60 days and I sold everything and moved to California. I was like, you know, quintessential, like rock bottom, starting over story. And so in that moment, I started doing a lot of work with the feminine and I swung so far into feminine Mm. But I completely abandoned my masculine energy. And what started to happen was I was in flow and creativity and like alignment and like intuition and all that was great, but there was no rootedness in systems and structures. And as a result, I was very inconsistent with the way I was showing up in my business, the way I was showing up for myself and my self-care practices. Like I would come in like guns a blazing and then I would burn out and I would come in and I would burn out. There was no like in the middle. I was just swinging all over the place. So I realized that I needed to find this harmony between masculine and feminine. And so for me, the masculine is the framework of my life. Mm -hmm. It's consistency, it's rootedness, it's structure, it's being a woman of my word, it's execution, but it's doing it from a place of expansion, not force. Yeah. It's doing it from a place of devotion, which feels so much juicier than consistency. Like the word devotion feels better to me than consistency. Mm, I love that. My feminine is the place that I, I create from, right. And the masculine is the place that I execute from. And so what was happening, these men were mirroring back to me. These relationships were coming into my life to show me where I was being inconsistent. And as a result, I was putting myself in environments that felt like chaos because, um, my life growing up was very chaotic and my relationship with my father was very chaotic. So I'm attracting all these men that are not safe. They don't feel rooted. Like they're in and out, they're hot and cold. Mm. And so that was an opportunity for me to look at where am I being inconsistent with myself? Where am I being hot and cold with myself? Where am I not creating a standard of excellence for myself? And so the dating apps became an ex escape for me when I was feeling lonely Similarly to how like Instagram or social media will become a numbing out, like instead of being devoted to the practices that I know will help me like grounding in the earth or working out or meditating, if I'm lonely, instead of me doing the work to go into the loneliness, I was just looking for someone to fill that void for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I recognized that it was fucking with my energy. It was causing me stress and anxiety. And so I eliminated it from my life. And so I feel like I'm in a season right now where I'm open, feminine. I'm in the feminine. I'm very much open to him showing up, but I am not in the masculine intention of making it happen. Right, right. My energy has been redirected to devotion to myself, which feels really good for me right now. I know that based on some of the men that I've attracted, there's an opportunity for me to clean some things up with myself. Yeah. Um, there's an opportunity for me to clean a few things up with my business mm -hmm. and create some more stability in my own life so that when my King shows up, I can receive him fully. Mm -hmm. And so I removed the dating apps because they felt too proactive and a little bit too in the masculine. And I've completely surrendered I'm not saying I won't go back to them, but for right now, I'm so open to him showing up at Whole Foods and asking me <laughs> to dinner. Like I'm here for that. 
And I truly believe that my magnetism will allow that to happen. So if I am in stress and anxiety and chaos and inconsistency, and I don't feel rooted and grounded in my masculine, I will continue to attract that. So the work begins with, these are the things that are causing me stress. I'm going to eliminate them. My number one priority is my energy. And I'm doing the things that are keeping me in a space of love, of expansion, of magnetism, so that I can attract all the things I desire and I will be open to them showing up however they show up. Yeah. I mean, he could be listening to this podcast right now and be like, that's my wife. <laughs> you, never know. you never know. I'm open universe. I'm open and I will continue to do the work to be the woman that can hold that. So that's kind yeah. of you know, the long, long story behind that. But yeah, it feels, it feels really good. And I will say there have definitely been some moments where I'm just like, I just want someone to just hold me, like literally just physically hold me. And going back to what we were talking about earlier of like, I, those are the moments where um, I would numb out and go on my app. Right. And that just perpetuates the feeling. So now I get to sit in that feeling of I'm not lonely, which is an affirmation statement. I'm experiencing a moment of loneliness. Mm. And what does my little girl need and how can I love on her? And what are the things that are going to nurture my soul versus like seeking it outwardly? Like, how do I give that to myself? Totally. I love that. Yeah. It's been really eye opening. Yeah. Know, dating has like been one of the most powerful uh, containers for me that I've never taken the time to date. I've always been relationship to relationship. I was married for seven years and that relationship ended in the end of 2019. And I didn't start dating until the very end of 2020. Mm. And it's just been one of the most powerful containers for growth. And I'm so grateful for all the lessons um, but yeah, I feel like I'm in a season of my life right now where I'm ready to just kind of like let go of that a little bit, like the, 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 this outward seeking and just be open to it showing up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm resonating so much with everything you just said. Cause I feel like that's where I'm at myself. Like I'm recognizing, um, where I too have been inconsistent and wanting to create structure and build the trust with myself on a deeper level or again, because <laughs> I feel like there have been, um, there have also like, even with like, like, like health, like healthier eating. Yes. I do eat pretty 90% of the time I'm eating relatively healthy and I've been, um, you know, consuming things with gluten or dairy. And I know that that bothers me. I also know it's a psycho-emotional thing too. So I feel like I've given myself the permission to have the things with gluten or have the cheese or whatever, because I'm like, it's not that that's bothering me. It's the emotional thing that's happening on the inside, but it's still affecting my body and like how it's, you know, I I'm tired. I, I recognize like what it's actually doing to me physically as well, because I have not healed that emotional wound, whatever's going on. So it's just like growing that trust again. And it's like, Kelly, no, when you say you're going to do something, do it. You don't want to eat gluten anymore. You don't want to have dairy anymore. Then do it. Like, you know, yeah, give yourself, give yourself grace if you do have it, but like, whatever. But it's also like what you were saying, just like I removed hinge. I was only on hinge, but I removed it from my phone like a week and a half ago myself. Cause I was like, I feel like it was the same thing. Like my intention was because I'm bored or I'm lonely or, okay, I have a, like, I feel like I use dating apps in seasons. It's like, oh, when I'm feeling really good, then I'll go in the dating app. Or when I'm feeling really bad, I don't want to be in it because it's just, I know that I'm doing it to fill a void and I'm not being intentional. Like I probably don't care to go on the date with the guy, like maybe, but I'm like, I don't really care. Cause I just like, I don't feel good in maybe another area of my life and I'm just using it and I don't want to use anyone. Yeah, so, I, I have a story that if I'm not, because I'm relatively, I've been in Atlanta for about a year, almost a year and a half, and I am very much a, a natural introvert. Like I'm an extroverted introvert. Right. And I had this story that like, if I'm not going on dates, I'm not really doing anything right. socially. Yeah. And I recognize I'm like, that's also not, it's like, a, I'm just bored. So let me just, I mean, any woman can log on to an app and have a date in mm -hmm. an hour if she wants and it's like, 
it's kind of like, that's kind of like the fast food of connection. Yeah. You yeah. know? And it's like, again, it's like, like what you were saying with the gluten and stuff, it's like, you can observe the story and you know that it's there, but the work is to actually embody the new story. And that's where we meet ourselves. And we have to have a little bit of that forgiveness and that grace to say, okay, like this is an old habit and it's going to take time. But as long as I am willing to meet myself in it and I'm aware of it and I do something about it, it will shift. But yeah, I totally, I'm like, I'm bored. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. But like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it, it, like I said, I just don't want to do anything with the wrong intention anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, meeting myself, like I had to cut off a, a relationship that I've probably shared with you before, but you know, I've been dabbling with over the last few years and what you were saying, it's like the relationship has been such a great learning and growth container. Same. Like maybe I haven't been going on dates with other people, but I have been learning so much from my experience with this one person. Yeah. And I finally was like, this isn't it. This isn't serving me. It's not in alignment with what I preach. It's not in alignment with who I am, like to myself. And so I had to a few weeks ago be like, this isn't it. It's not working. It's not working for me. I feel like the both of us, you know, it's not a you're not showing up for me. It's I'm not showing up for myself. Like you said, it's a mirror, right? Like where's that inconsistency and everything. And which is like, I'm not great. I'm not showing up for as my best self for me right now. And I don't want to continue to have these sabotaging behaviors. Like I need to cut this off and I don't know if, and when we could be friends later on, but right now I can't be, I can't be friends because I am in this place of, I want more and I don't like my other guy friends that I'm strictly friends with. I don't want more. Like when I say goodbye, I'm going home. Like, that's fine. But with this person, I'm like, I'm saying goodbye, but I really want them to stay. (laughs) I really want them to, okay, well, I'll call you later. You know? And it's like, I recognize though that it just wasn't serving me the way that it was. So I had to cut it off. And I feel like that was such an, obviously there was pain that came with it, but it was also such a empowering thing that I was able to do and recognize. And so much growth has come from that. And yes, you think about the person still every day. It was only, it was just recently. And, but I'm like, but you're doing the right thing. You're doing a really good thing. And you're recognizing your intentions of like what you need to do moving forward and, and with your business and, and your health and your self-care. And just like you were saying, it's just being very intentional about getting yourself to a better place so that you are continuing to attract more and magnetize what you are wanting versus, you know, it, what is it? Like you become the love you want to receive or something like that. <laughs> like that's yeah. it. Like become the person that you want to attract. So I, you know, I, like I said, I've just been inconsistent with that for a while, but while also growing and expanding and learning and healing from past things in that journey. Yeah. When you set a standard for yourself, you're the one that's now responsible for upholding that standard. So it sounds all great. Like I'm going to be this and I'm going to have this in my (laughs) life. And like, it's all great. Like it sounds awesome. But then you're like, Oh, now I have to like be the one to uphold that. And this is where, you know, we meet rejection. Yeah you know, are we going to abandon ourselves or are we willing to give up good for great? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it is. Celebrate you for that. I know that wasn't easy and, but so much will come out on the other side of that for you. Yeah, I definitely agree. It already is. Like I, I, I do feel good and lighter and all that. And, you know, I have to, like you were saying in those moments of like, when you were feeling lonely and you just want to have someone to hold you and physically hold you, I have that too. And it's like, yeah, I just want, cause I'm sure that person would still come over and be like, okay, sure. <laughs> you know, but it's like, no, just sit with myself, honor what that little girl needs inside of me. Maybe go play a game or paint or do something like go outside and go for a walk again and connect with the whole punch leaves. I don't know. <laughs> But that's it. It was like my curiosity. My little kid was like, that's so cool. (laughs) You know, so it's really tapping into and remembering who you are and just honoring yourself over and over again. It's a beautiful journey. This has been so great. 
Love is a spiritual practice. <laughs> it is. It really is. Oh my goodness. Well, is there anything, um, I know I can talk to you forever, but is there anything that um, you would like want to promote right now um, and then tell people where they can find you? Thank you. Yes. Well, my favorite place to hang out is on Instagram. I'm at the Melissa Martin. Um, and of course my podcast will be courageous. You can find on, on all places. Those are the two platforms that I spend the most time with, or that you can gain the most access to me. Um, things I'm promoting. I'm always in the vibe of offers and promotion, whether that's free masterclasses or things of that nature. But right now in this current moment, the thing that I'm most excited about is my retreat. I'm hosting a retreat in Sedona, Arizona, October 19th through the 23rd. And if you're listening to this after, I'll have a retreat in the springtime as well. And it's called Devoted. And Devoted really is about taking a lot of what we were talking about today, the, the framework of, you know, owning your power and shifting into that future version of yourself. And we go real deep with it. So it's one part spiritual practices, the meditation, the journaling, all that, but it's also one part play, um, in a very intimate container. So that is one thing that I'm very excited about. And then, um, the mastermind experience will be coming, uh, enrollment for that will be opening in the fall, like late fall, October, and we'll start in January. And that will be exactly the same thing that we just talked about. We're going to be taking that framework of power and going deep with that over five or six months together. And I'll be bringing in um, embodiment experts to take you through practices that will help you in each one of those phases to really like anchor that in. So that'll be, um, yeah, I'm, those are the things that I'm, I'm most excited about. And of course, I always love one-to-one -one mentorship it is my greatest joy. Like I love getting deep with women and just seeing them expand. So, mm. but you can just find me on Instagram and you can see, you know, what I'm up to depending on when you're listening to this. And if something speaks to your heart, just send me a DM and we'll go from there. Yeah. I love it. Well, thanks so much for being here, Melissa. Oh, you're, wow. you're great. And I love the work that you're, that you're putting out there. And like I said, I feel like, you know, now just like listening, obviously we've had multiple other private conversations, but even just this episode was so helpful and healing for me. And I'm like, I feel like I just like, I'm mirroring your journey, but a few steps behind <laughs> and it feels really cool. So we are side by side in our right. own journeys. And yeah. I, I also honor and recognize your power as a light in this world and a visionary and an influence to so many, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I know that this is, you're just getting started. Yeah. So great. I love it. <laughs> Thanks girl. Yeah, I love you. So much love. you too. If you loved this episode, please download, share, rate, and review. If you are ready to step into that next level version of you and grow your business and bank account, it's time to unleash your goddess magic and chase life with Kelly. You can start this epic expansion journey by diving into the goddess magic course bundle found at chaselifetogether.com. Please connect with me on Instagram at chaselifewithkelly. Join the Chase Life with Kelly Facebook community and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Till next time, create the life you crave, babe, and chase life with Kelly.